Hey guys, t here. Today we got a look at the Tier 7 Russian Destroyer Tashkent. Got troops on the screen there, you can see leveling him up, working on getting him up to 14, but pretty heavy focus on the guns for this build. These are gunboats, these are pure gunboats, these Soviet destroyers, that's how I would spec them out. Tashkent's a little interesting, it gives you some options due to the torpedo performance, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But you could potentially throw on like Gurn or alter your build, focus more on the Torps. That is viable. A lot of people though would say the Tashkent's been supplanted by the Fantastic. The Russian destroyers as a whole have been supplanted by the French destroyers. By and large, I'd say that was probably true. There's not a lot of downside to the French destroyers. Comparing Tashkent to the Fantastic, the only real advantages Tashkent has is much quicker cycle on the torps. I got 58.7 second torpedo reload on this one. 86 seconds on my Fantastic build. 55 knots in the water on these compared to 80 on the French tier 7. Now, due to the concealment of the torps, we have a full second less reaction time. 7.69. This is a stat. Not in the game, but if you know how to do it, you can calculate how long the opponent has to react to the torpedoes once they pop up on the screen. 7.69 seconds in the Tashkent, 8.65 on the Fantastic. So, torpedo performance, you can argue, is better. You could definitely argue it's worse. It just depends on what you value, how you're using them. But the, you know, you have basically a 30-second yeah, 30 quicker reload, which is dramatically different. And you can launch all nine torps out the same side of the ship. Fantastic, you get six on one side, three on the other. Other main difference, durability. I got 23,740 max health on this one. On my French build, I got 18,500. Plus, if you looked at the build here, we have Vian increasing the incoming dispersion. We got Sims, that's boosting the HP. We got the base trait of troops reduces incoming damage. We're just basically going with the fact that this thing's going to be spotted. It's going to be shot. We want things to shoot at us often. You're going to see we're going to do some distraction plays throughout this game. We're, we're building to be able to withstand a few salvos here. So that's kind of the idea with this build. Again, you got a little bit more flexibility with the Tashkent and the Leningrad just due to the better torpedo performance on those. We'll see what the combo looks like when we get that in the legendary tier. But for the rest of the line, you're basically only using the guns. These The torpedoes, close-range torpedoes, are suicide torpedoes. Doesn't mean you have to kill yourself using them, but that's, you know, the risk of danger to you is using them, or using them is quite high. There, that destroyer looked like he got away. We fired one more shot and took care of him there. Usually when those ships are slowing down, they're disappearing, go ahead and try and hold your aim in there for one more salvo. Just take the shot. Even if you miss, nobody's going to laugh at you. If you hit them, you kill them. So always try and do that. You can even be peppering, you know, as long as you're not spotted. You can pepper the area and see if you can randomly hit them. Nothing wrong with that. Anyway, the point I was making about the lower tier, i.e. all the destroyers up to tier 6 in the tech tree, uh, Russian destroyers, don't use the torps unless you're, number one, coming around an island. You have some sort of ambush situation where they're all of a sudden very close to you or you got a lot of health you're closing in on a battleship you think you can weather at least one salvo from him he doesn't have support ships helping him out shooting at you you can go in there with for a suicide type run hit him with those torps and take him out but a high damage play high risk play uh, if you do it incorrectly you're gonna die I watch people playing these Russian destroyers all the time just killing themselves even if they land a full torpedo salvo in a battleship and kill them. If they die at the same time, I'd still say it's a bad trade. You want to preserve the destroyers. This isn't your typical cap and control type of destroyer. Yes, you can get away with that. In fact, we're going to capture two objectives this game, but that's not the main role for this. But you still want to protect it. It is a destroyer. Valuable piece. What's going on in this game? We've cleared our side. I was coming over here. We take a shot at him just to say, what's up? You know, start thinking about us, try and distract. Atlanta, though, currently is preventing us from getting on B. He's also actually capturing B, but we'd like to get into B. We'd like to continue to move down southeast, continue to hunt destroyers. 
which we've gotten rid of the first destroyer, if you notice. Atlanta's close, though. We do have a little bit of help coming in. Throw the torps down here. This is a great example of one of the things I'm always yelling at my TV, at my teammates. Shoot your guns. You know, we wasted five seconds there trying to line up the torps. Yes, they were insurance type of torpedoes in case I got killed. We wanted to definitely make sure that Atlanta went down. So that was increasing the odds. But it took a little too long to line up that salvo. That's normally a salvo I'd get off a lot quicker. For some reason, it took a little too long there. And we could have almost gotten two full salvos off in that time. All we needed was one salvo to kill them with the guns. So you see it more often in these destroyer v. destroyer duels where one guy is carefully lining up these torpedoes, takes 10 seconds to launch them, then as soon as they launch them, the other destroyer just turns and dodges that carefully aim shot. Meanwhile, the guy that dodged the salvos or the torpedoes has managed to put three, four, five rounds of gunfire into that destroyer that launched the torpedoes, crippling them. So just take the guns, you know, fire the guns on reload. If you got time to get torpedoes off in between your gun reload, then go ahead and do it, I guess is my point. Here the Asashi is pulling up and we're going to take that shot here. He was popping the smoke. We checked the map very quickly. Nothing else in our white detection ring, so we could take that shot for free. We definitely want to destroy those destroyers whenever possible. A couple of key takeaways for these Russian destroyers. Number one, when you're fighting other destroyers, you want to be closer to your support ships than they are to their support ships. Whoever is closer to their pack usually wins those duels. If it's a straight-up 1v1 destroyer fight, your guns are top of the line, you know, assuming you have them specced out appropriately. You'll be bombing on all these destroyers. The French ones, the high-tier French destroyers, can get a little dangerous because they do have those reload boosts. You'd have to keep that in mind. If they activate that, they can pile on the shots, which are almost as strong as yours, but due to the fact that they're going to be pumping them out much faster, that'll turn the tide. They'll probably win that fight, so that's a danger there. People using the smoke sonar consumables, the bing-bong combo, uh, that sort of stuff you got to be on the lookout for. But 1v1, you can win a lot of those fights. Now that Iowa, granted we did slow down, but that was a really solid shot. You know, He landed about six shells into us, got about six, 7,000 damage. But that just goes to show, when we have that much health there, those battleships, that was about as good of a battleship salvo from that Iowa into this ship that we can really expect to take. If we're moving at full speed, if we're doing a better job dodging, we're really very rarely going to take those. So my point is, when you're playing the ship, and if you have it spec'd out for durability, you got to kind of be able to play with the mentality, yes, we're going to take some shots. you got to be firing those guns. You don't want to be reckless. It's very easy to get reckless. There's a fine line on playing the ship uh, successfully, intelligently, and recklessly, and, you know unsuccessfully and you'll frequently cross over that line whenever you're playing these ships but you know you want to be involved you want to be causing damage you want to be a distraction at the same time you don't want to get caught like close to two or three red ships who all have shots at you because they if they can pile on the damage quickly they'll get rid of you if you're squared up against a battleship who's eight kilometers away it's going to take them assuming you have a lot of health three four salvos and conceptually, that's about a minute and a half worth of damage dealing for that ship. Now, meanwhile, you're either torpedoing them, shooting them with the guns, your teammates are piling on him, hopefully. Or if none of that's going on, then you're not sitting there taking three salvos from the battleship. Uh, you know, because it's not a smart play at that point in time. But my point is, you know, until you get really low like we are now, where obviously we're one shot, we got to be much more careful at this point in time. But until that point happens you can be use your hp use your mobility use the difficulty the enemy is going to have uh, especially if you have your build set up for like income dispersion or whatever use all these advantages get them to aim their guns at you take those shots no don't get a boise or something that's six kilometers away from you uh focused on you because he'll be able to kill you but these battleships or ships that are going to have a tough time killing you go ahead and distract them get them occupied Get them thinking about something else. Iowa, we give him a little love tap there. He's going to be tough to hit with those torpedoes at that angle. We might get one or two. You can see he's mostly nose in on us. If he turns a little to the right, screen or, or audience right, 
that is. Uh, he can completely dodge them. Luckily for us, though, the first salvo, crossfire, uh, destroyer torpedoes here. We talk about this a lot, creating crossfires with torpedoes. Often it's just to get uh, those ships turned so your battleships can shoot them in the citadel, but it works out gloriously as well if you get a destroyer spaced out like that and you get a torpedoes coming in a grid pattern. Then he angles towards one, the other ones catch him in the broadside. So nice play there between ourselves and the other destroyer. Anyway, that's a look at the Tashkent for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you all later on our page.